gorgeous conversation with the magnificent uh, Wendy Vanden Heuvel. And we are so grateful that she is with us uh, today. Wendy is a magnificent actor, director, producer, teacher, uh, and her own, she has her own uh, company called Piece by Piece uh, Productions. She has worked with all kinds of different people from all over the world. And she's also a film actress and has uh, produced films. So we are so um, grateful that Wendy is with us here uh, today. So welcome, Wendy. And she's one of our dearest friends. Yes. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, Wendy. So, um, so wonderful that you're uh, here with us. And I just wanted to uh, maybe start with, I got to see you in that fabulous production of Mud before this coronavirus uh, happened. And Wendy was magnificent. And uh, this was a play that was written by Maria Irene Fornes. And I understand that you're kind of working on a documentary about uh, her life. Um, well, that documentary you know, was made um, that documentary is an amazing film called The Rest I Make Up. Mm -hmm. um, it was made by Michelle Memran, who took, I think was made over the course of 10 years. Mm. And so that came out, I believe, two years ago. Oh, okay. Um, and you can find it on streaming um, places now. And it is about the life and work of Irene Fornes, Maria Irene Fornes, who's a Cuban playwright, mm -hmm. um, who really is, you know, they talk about it as one of the least known um, amazing playwrights around. And the film mm -hmm. has kind of created a renaissance for her mm -hmm. work to come back and be produced all over the country. That's so um, great. So where, great. You, where did you first meet her? Well, I met Irene, how did I meet Irene? Oh. I, um, in my 20s, I moved out to San Francisco for a year and I auditioned for Mud in my 20s at the Magic Theater. Mm -hmm. And she was doing a play, I think she was doing Sarita at the time at the Eureka, the old Eureka. Mm -hmm. um, and so she would come to rehearsals. And so I met her there. And then um, my producing company piece by piece productions produced mud in new york and then we produced um springtime and i think another play of hers but i started to know her that way and i just i love her work it's mm -hmm. so innocent absurd and truthful and mm -hmm. just she has she writes from a source that is really coming from it's just, you just feel this deep, deep well inside of her. That mm -hmm. her, come mm -hmm. from. And her imagination, she, mm -hmm. her imagination plays such a big part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a huge, you have a huge background in experimental theater. Um, where did that start for you? Did it start at, at NYU or did it start before that or after that or, or where? You know, it's funny when I was 11, my mother um, befriended uh, Joseph Chaikin of the mm -hmm. Open Theater. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, if you want to get into the theater, you should really know people like that and their work. And I used to go to the, the rehearsals of Joe's work. And so that was a big influence on me. And so there was a big push, I think, in my home to really try to understand the values behind commercial theater and experimental theater. and. Mm -hmm. Not that one is better than the other, and it's all subjective, but there was a, 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 there was, you know, there was something, I was really introduced to the work of Joe Chaik and Peter Brook, mm -hmm. um, all of those kind of, you know, directors at a very early age. And, and La Mama played a big part of that, right? Mm -hmm. I see a lot of the work there all the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and uh, Ellen Stewart and, so I was, that was really, I was kind of grown, you know, I was raised with that work. And where did you, um, where did you meet Grotowski and how, how did that happen? So Grotowski, um, I Maybe could you tell us about who Grotowski is? Yes, I hope I can do yeah. it. <laughs> Grotowski is a Polish playwright. I mean, in some circles, some people feel that in the 20th century, 
there was Stanislavski and there was Grotowski mm -hmm. and that Grotowski really brought in a whole new um, examination of the actor and the actor's work and that it stemmed from the body. Mm -hmm. And um, and so he had a theater in Poland and he became a very, and a company there and he became a very well-known theater director in Poland and developed a type of training. Um, there's a book called Towards a Poor Theater that you can yeah. read more about it. Um, yeah. But it's a very, it's a, it's a training for, of the, the, for the actor based on the body, mm -hmm. based on exercises. And it can at times look very acrobatic, but that's not its intent. Its intent is almost to awaken the whole body and so that the actor has their whole body, soul, spirit accessible to themselves when they work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a physical training. And mm -hmm. so I met him because he came to NYU. I went to the NYU Circle in the Square and then for two years and then I went to experimental theater program. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's been my um, thrust throughout my whole life is kind of kind of more uh, you know, classic actor training and then experimental training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Always kind of ridden that in between, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he came to, uh, he was looking to found a company in California. You were involved in that, right? So he had four periods of his work. One was the theater company, and then he left that and he started paratheatrical work. That was the second phase. Then he started Theater of Sources, which was a kind of more research phase. Paratheatrical work was really about taking the audience away and having people like do wild experiences. The most known of talk about paratheatrical work is that film, My Dinner with Andre. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So like- Burying he, people alive and stuff. Yeah, like and like all these experiences. But I think he started to feel that there was a little bit of flakiness going on there. You know, hmm. just, it didn't have enough form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, dove into a whole nother period called the theater of sources mm -hmm. and then from the theater of sources which was much more research and investigative with like 10 different cultures he then created something his fourth phase which was called objective drama and that's mm -hmm. when i went to study with him in irvine for a year mm -hmm. and did a lot of the exercises and the work there Mm -hmm. based on his research from theater of sources, mm -hmm. which part of it was, again, training, right? Mm -hmm. You were doing Haitian rituals. Mm -hmm. You were doing something that from the outside looked like um, a yoga uh, sun salutation called the mm -hmm. motions. But it, we did that every day at sunset. Mm -hmm. And then we did uh, singing and resonator work. Mm -hmm and all different things. And then one part was creative where we had to create our own mystery plays. Mm -hmm. And they were individual and they were cultural based. So because we worked with multicultural group, a multicultural group. So people from Korea and South America and Bali and the Haitian uh, people. And, and I think there was many, many more. Um, and then the students of Irvine. And then uh, I was a student from NYU that visited that group. And then we would create, the mystery play was to create a play based on a song mm -hmm. that you would go so deeply into your own kind of personal connection to your culture mm -hmm. that it would then be universal. Mm -hmm. it, on the, that somebody from another culture would get it on a human level. Mm -hmm. And that was the intent, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tent. And I spent three months not knowing what he was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. Um, anyway, I, yeah. I was very confused for a while. Yeah, I saw him uh, when, when I was a guest lecturer at UC Santa Cruz when he came and and uh, spoke. He actually stayed at the cottage I was I was uh, uh, housing in and with uh, this one director and uh, he. Uh, he spoke at the school and it was supposed to be, I think, an hour long 
thing and the, he talked for like four hours <laughs> and and I think people started to leave around hour three because they it was very hard to understand even just the language was was like you know it's like really hard to pick up his his thing but it was fascinating it was he was talking at that point he was he was showing us all these films about Haitian voodoo rituals and, and all of that so did you do piercing or any of that stuff piercing you mean like real well, skin piercing yeah, and the in the some of the Haitian voodoo rituals he was showing us were these ceremonies where they were actually piercing uh, sticks and stuff through their cheeks. No, we did not do piercing. Good. I think what he took the essential thing that he took from the Haitian ritual, which actually leads back to his original actor training work, mm -hmm. is the Yon Valu dance, which has to do with the spine. Mm -hmm. and the kundalini energy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. moving up the spine and all of his early training work actually is related to awakening the involvement of the spine and its connection to the nervous system mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. activation of that uh, right and the integration of it so mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so we did a lot hours yeah. of of yang valu singing and dancing work mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. so great wow. and would he um because he would back then he was he must have been you know i'm trying to guess what age he was back then probably was he was he as much as mid 60s already he had he had just left poland he poland he he sought asylum here right, right. it was when the political situation changed there yeah mm -hmm. um and so he was i think he was offered a place i think it anyway irvine offered him right an amazing piece of land right and mm. a barn and a yurt and a wow. studio and it was amazing resources so he yeah. just moved there but he struggled with irvine because it was 10 years old at that mm. time. Mm -hmm. and all our work was about these old cultures mm. and right history mm. And so it was really looking at America through a lens that mm -hmm. we come out after doing all these Haitian ritual and this, and you know, then we go to Bob's Big Boy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what? Who, who am I? What am I doing? You know, like, oh, America. Like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. What is this experiment? Wow. wow, trippy. So great. Um, so um, yeah. Also, your 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 production company, piece by piece. So. You have produced so many incredible uh, pieces um, with different uh, arts organizations, the, the Barrow Group, um, Rattlestick, the Rising Phoenix, Mabu Mines. And so, uh, so that name, how did you come to uh, name your production company? And is there a meaning behind that piece? By um, piece? Well, it's piece by piece and it's not piece like piece. Right. right piece by piece. I think it's how I work. I, I kind of work uh, by individual, with individual artists and individual, I mean, I tend to build relationships with artists and produce them over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But I, at that point, I was just going piece by piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was mm -hmm. like, this sounds good. Let's, let's do that. Or this mm -hmm. really sounds vital. And that sounds important. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's how it came. My I didn't have a name and I started it in 1999 um, because I, you know, I come from a lot of privilege, I will say. And so there was a big piece of myself that wanted to give back to artists. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I felt like I just couldn't like just do my own work. It was not, it, it was, I, I just wanted to be, um, I, it's funny, I took a I took a race workshop today with Art Equity, and mm -hmm. a big piece of it was think about your privileges. And it's not just money, it's like your contacts, it's your resources, mm -hmm. it's your education, it's um, so much of it, right? And so yeah. what well, the good news is, because I think there's a moment here where we tend to like go, oh, I'm so privileged, right? But it's like, how can you give back? Mm -hmm. how can you, yeah. What can you do to change the equity, um, the social justice in the world to give people opportunity to lift artists up? Right. So that was a big piece for me about starting that not-for-profit. And so 
And I think the name came from my friend at dinner. I was like, I need a name. And she was like, I said, I work. She said, talk about what you do. And I went, well, I kind of go like this and I choose pieces and then another piece. She goes, what about piece by piece? And I went, yeah. Yeah, Sounds that's good. good. Sounds good. That's good. But that's is that good. still the guiding principle for you? Do you? It seems like it is on the outside, which is that you sort of take projects one at a time and kind of go like, oh, that sounds good. Let, maybe we should do that. Is, is that yeah, is that the guiding principle for you or is there something else or? Um, I think I think I'm going through a lot of changes like everybody now, right? Mm -hmm. I it definitely I said to somebody the other day, I said, I'm all for supporting work, but if I really take something on in a big way, it's kind of like going to bed with somebody. Like I have to actually love the work. I have yeah. to really respond to it um, because it's a lot of time, yeah. it's a lot of resources, and it's a lot of um, care. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, and and I usually develop relationships, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's long term. Um, yeah. But I've I um I am changing in terms of the course. Like I am like everybody else looking towards a more equitable, like what's going on now in terms of the Black Lives Matter movement mm -hmm. and in mm -hmm. terms of privilege and in terms of, uh, you know, just giving voice to other artists mm -hmm. who yeah. are not heard, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. I, 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 I mean, at the risk of, you know, making you blush, uh, I just want to voice that, um, you know, Wendy, we've worked with Wendy for a long, long time. Mm. And uh, as an artistic collaborator, uh, whether it's, you know, as a fellow artist and actor or producer or whatever, um, I, I, I feel that Wendy has more integrity or as much integrity as anybody I have ever Aww. met. <laughs> um, she's been a champion of so many, many projects. And, uh, you know, one of our longstanding collaborations has been all the work we've done with Martin Moran. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether that's in the States or around the world. And uh, um, I mean, not a, not a day goes by when we're working on something where we're talking about like how amazing Wendy is mm -hmm. as a person. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, Thank you for that. Mm. <laughs> I know that's yeah, funny. I, I was thinking yesterday, I went, I have to really dive into my values and make sure I'm walking my talk. Like, so I'm, that's very nice of you to say that. I you, think you, you totally you do. do walk, like, you, just you even like the with the, the projects that you put your energy into, like, um, uh, that you know, these, these projects, I know that, that we kind of share like, oh, art can heal the world. And how is, how are we able to kind of, um, I think you shared with me that you wanted to kind of heal yourself and heal the world with your art that, you know, piece by piece. And so the projects that um, hopefully that you, you know, have put yourself into, it's like, how, how are people going to have an experience that they're going to look at themselves differently after they leave the theater and I think you know all the pieces that you've kind of put your energy into have been extraordinary pieces yeah. so and with that I mean because you do so much I mean acting and directing and producing and teaching is there one of those disciplines that um that feeds you the most out of all that stuff Ooh. that's such an interesting question um I like them all for different reasons right yeah they're, they're all so I, they're kind of like my children right like right. you can't love just one yeah you know like producing i love the conviviality of it i love the diplomacy of it i love the you know giving people uplifting people and the feeling of just giving that and then i love the kind of more meditative practice i would say of acting you know, like where you really are internal and working that way. And I've directed less than I've acted or produced or taught. So, but I love directing. I, 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 I do like it. And then teaching, I actually, lately I've been thinking, I miss teaching so mm. much. Mm. Because 
it's such a beautiful way to be with people mm-hmm. and yeah. be like open just it's such a privilege to mm-hmm. be able to open up like channels for them and mm-hmm. just see that happen it's a great way to just and i love acting and theater so much so that to share that passion mm-hmm. yeah and to share it with their the students yeah. passion too it's just have you taught any zoom classes I have not, I have taught, I taught the motions, the Grotowski motions on online um, uh-huh. for a group. They asked the group, I, wor- I work in Vancouver every summer with mm-hmm. a group doing this like retreat um, with another teacher named Raina von Waldenberg, who's mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and uh, we, there were like, we did the Zoom, we did the motions on Zoom, but it's a oh. silent action, right? Uh-huh. right? And it is like a sun salutation. So it, it was the physical work, although I have a lot of friends who teach Grotowski work and they're doing it online. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. great. You know, I yeah. mostly, the, during this time of COVID and, uh, you know, the, racial uprising and all of that that's going on the political that we've been fighting um i have really centered myself in philanthropy Mm -hmm. and making a difference for artists Mm -hmm. and also um for covid for just all different things Mm -hmm. and and got very involved in the election Mm -hmm. yeah 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 thank you thank uh (laughs) yeah no I mean, so many people did, right? Like democracy right. works. So it does, many yes. People did it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. I hope so. A... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you're. I'm wondering if, like, I don't know if you've had this experience. I um, I also, you know, I I practice in a lot of different modalities myself. I'm an actor. I'm a director. I'm a musician. I I'm also writing. I'm all doing all these things, and. Um, it used to be that that was kind of an issue in, in f- for me and, and it seemed like for others in terms of how one develops a career. And in the recent years, it seems like, you no, know, this is the norm. Like mm-hmm. all these people I know are just doing all these different mm-hmm. things. Uh, I, have you had that experience at all? Or has it just always been the same for you? Or what, what, what's that been like? I totally agree with you, Seth. I think when I came out of school, there was a big push for you to stay as an actor if you were mm-hmm. an actor and don't produce because you'll start to be seen as a producer mm-hmm. and it gets confusing or it waters down. But then mm-hmm. I feel that like, uh, I would say like, I don't know how long ago it was, but it, I think as a theater maker now, that it's so important to wear so many different hats mm-hmm. to create yeah. your own work, your own possibilities to, you know, and in the sixties, it was like that all those yeah. like cafe Chino and all of those places, Yeah. everybody like, you know, somebody was doing the accounting while sewing a costume, you know, like, why, was, why do you think I, I agree with you? I, I why, do why do you think that is? Why do you think it's important to, to wear all those hats and, well, I think theater making is a highly collaborative um, process. And I think, you know, you can't rely on getting your work out just from an audition. Mm-hmm. You know, I spent a lot of time doing work. I was like, I like seeing work that I wasn't really satisfied with and then going like, I want to do my own work. Yeah. Um, but I think to be versed in all those things is great for so many reasons, because you can see the other side. Mm-hmm. You can use your tools of directing as an actor. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use your tools of acting as a director, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you can use your ability to produce if you find a play that you love and you want to get it done. And mm-hmm. you start to and you start to meet people as you produce too. It opens your circle of um, it's almost like you need to reach out to people. It's a very yeah. outward um kind of position. Yeah. So I just think it gives more choice. Mm-hmm. And then each one feeds the other, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I agree. I, totally agree I also feel too. like yeah. it it uh it somehow 
uh, I noticed that it, it ends up in uh, affecting the end product because things mm -hmm. tend to, because the collaboration is enhanced. It's not just that you're contributing as, you know, in, in one department, you have a bunch of people that are contributing in many departments, but hopefully have the experience and skill set to not interrupt workflow, like that, that people are able to really support each other because they know what each other, not only, not only do they know about those skill sets in general, but they have everybody's coming to it and everybody is understanding the project in a more of a holistic way. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's where, you know, experience in these different realms really kicks in and in, in that that's been my experience of it. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's so great to be able to, it, it could be in any relationship, it could, it could be in a, an artist producer relationship. It's, it's, you know, talking to someone who's producing, who is also a like-minded artist is a very different conversation than talking to someone who's producing, who's really uh, doesn't have any experience in that realm and, and maybe not even interest in that realm. And it's a different conversation and it's a different collaborative process. I mean, some of the, some of the most wonderful tiny uh, or not tiny adjustments that happen, for example, in our work with Marty, with Martin Moran, you know, a lot of that would come through our discussions with you or from you or, or from somebody else in, in the, in the process. And, you know, uh, I used to work at Bloomberg as a, uh, an assistant graphic designer <laughs> and um, it's an odd, long, weird story, but I, I sat next to Mike Bloomberg's desk literally um, for years. And he used to always talk about the way, you know, the way he had the place laid out because he would lay it out like a sort of like a, like the trading floor. There was no, if you looked at the architecture in the room, there was no hierarchy. You could not tell who was the big boss or who was, you know, somebody in an entry level position. It all just, there was no clues really, unless you got to know people. And the underlying theory that I heard him talk about on that front was that a good idea can come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, that if everything is oriented top down, um, that doesn't allow for that feedback of bottom up or sideways or whatever. And, and if everybody is open to everybody's best ideas, then you can end up with some brilliant output. I think that's really kind of interesting. And I think it, it, it's true in the artistic realm too, if you can find a way of doing it smoothly. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Inspiration, inspiration. And a couple of other things. So, uh, so Wendy, um, Wendy has, um, is married to Brad and Brad's a filmmaker. And Wendy's also been in a couple of Brad's films, um, Frank the Bastard and, uh, the undeserved. underserved. Oh, underserved. Underserved. It's and actually, the undeserved. The undeserved. It's undeserved. Okay. It is the undeserved, right? The undeserved. So, um, uh, so what is it like to work with your husband on a project? <laughs> 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 I love working with Brad. Actually, we get along really well. Um, he's a real collaborator to the yeah. point yeah. where I am like nervous. Like he yeah. delegates beyond. And um, uh, he really, really delegates. But I love working with him. And um, you know, and he wrote those those yeah. those uh, films. But you know, it's it's a dance. And there's you know, I'm the last person to give advice because I'm his partner, right? But so I have to say it in a very um, direct way that he can hear it sometimes but for the most part he's open to hearing stuff and uh, what's the name of the documentary uh you y'all made in, in in nicaragua right right is that where it is? so beautiful honduras. oh it's honduras, honduras about it's the voices beyond the wall yeah beautiful. i i just for for what it's worth beautiful. a quick plug this documentary is okay. so moving and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's uh, uh, it, wait, is it? Uh, can you see it online? You can get yeah. I think you can get it on Amazon, and I think it's on Netflix now. Uh huh. Oh, good. Uh, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. But we went down to Honduras to an all girls orphanage there, and um, we uh, Brad was. It, it's based on um, a poet priest named Spencer Reese went down there 
to work with the girls for a year and right. Brad he asked Brad if he wanted to make a documentary yeah. of the whole thing and so we did and it's really beautiful what's beautiful is it's really about um kind of a matriarchy actually yeah. like it's all female run young girls taking care of one another yeah yeah and mothering each other yeah and, um and it really is about love it's about forgiveness yeah uh, because they're all they were all some of the parents had died but some of the parents were still alive yeah mm -hmm. you know economically support them and some of them just didn't want them yeah yeah but they were alive and would come at visiting day which right. was yeah. even more problematic yeah yeah um, but it's a beautiful film it is I agree, it yeah. really is about the poetry part of it is beautiful because you s see their out word life in Honduras and how rough Honduras is but then you see their internal life mm -hmm. their poems, and you see they they're so beautiful the they are yeah yeah it is very special it's really extraordinary and another special thing I mean Wendy's been involved with uh the uh Lake Lucille Chekhov projects for many many years and um so fun and that happens every August and I th I don't think you guys got to do one this year but you've made that beautiful film I'm a seagull too which captures that whole spirit of um uh you know the the Chekhov project and maybe you could talk about that just a little bit about what that is sure. and, Love yeah it. Project. Um, so that was started, it was conceived and, and began by Brian Murdies and Melissa Kievman. They went to a conference that Eric Ain gave, uh, and it was about bringing theater back to the community. Mm -hmm. And they had a house um, about 45 minutes out of New York, and they had a neighborhood. And they thought, you know what? We have a house, we have a neighborhood, let's put up a play. And so they started with the seagull in the backyard. They invited a bunch of friends up to do a play. And then they cooked all together and they worked together and they put the play on for the neighborhood. And that 10 years later, that developed into, you know, each year it kind of grew and grew and grew and grew te technically, it grew artistically. Um, and uh, it, they do a checkoff play every summer, a uh, different one. And uh, they did the seagull after, I think it was about nine years, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but we decided to make a film of it because the footage, we looked at the footage, they've done videos of it. And the footage was so beautiful because it's so visual. Like, yeah. you know, there's puppets coming out of the lake. And yeah. there's, I think, three sisters. For the fire scene, they floated down the lake like hundreds of lanterns. Yeah. For cherry orchard, they literally chopped a tree down for about half an hour. Yeah. Um, there are actors and trees. There's scenes that take place in the water. There's. And you rehearse for how long when you do it? Uh, we rehearse for. We actually everybody shows up off book, mm -hmm. and we rehearse for a week, and then mm -hmm. we put it up for one one day. day yeah and rain or shine right? yeah rain or shine. yeah we, i think the two times that we went it was rain like rain. a lot of rain <laughs> <laughs> but i love that you also kind of feed the whole community so everyone uh has lunch um uh during the break it's all day it's fair. it is really it's an extraordinary so experience yeah. and and uh the, the the design is off the hook yeah the the, the debo Debo is the designer. Yeah, yeah. incredible. She's I think one year you did was it which play was it where you where you had the inside you put sod and in, in the inside house so inside the house there was like you know yeah, grass and all that stuff yeah, and then you can tell I don't know. inside or outside yeah that was I crazy off, I think yeah but there is a film that you can see and it's on our website now so you can download it there and watch it if you are curious and it's called I am a seagull. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the website is iamaseagull.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was the name? Somebody had asked what the name of the documentary was again, uh, the Honduras one. What, what's that one called? It's called Voices Beyond the Wall. Voices Beyond the Wall. Yeah. Voices Beyond the Wall. Great. We had another name for a while, and then Trump decided to build a wall. And so then he thought, 
this is kind of more, this is, he, his intent was to have this film shown mostly in states where it might open people's eyes more to yeah. what, what, yeah. what was being shut out behind the wall. And right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That was the intent. Yeah. yeah. So it's very successful in really giving you a, a sense of this world that, you know, most of us don't see. And, uh, and we might have whatever sort of inadvertent xenophobic uh, imagery in our mind about what it's, what it's like in these third world places or something like that. But that film really brings you into it in a way that feels, you know, complex and human and um, you just fall in love with the people, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's really amazing. Yeah. Um, so do you want, oh, yeah, um, usually we have some questions that people, if people um, feel like they want to ask some questions, um, we take some questions. So I'll look at the, yeah, and, um, and, the chat here. And you could uh, post them in the chat if you're in the Zoom session. If you're watching on Facebook Live, you can post it in the chat there. And uh, we will get that as well. So uh, we'll, we'll continue chatting, but if you have any questions, please, uh, please uh, share them and, and we can address them. Right, so, so Wendy, so uh, would you have any words of inspiration for young artists coming out of college now into this, uh, this COVID time, this economic time, uh, young people wanting to, you know, that are coming out and what, any words of wisdom or inspiration that, um, that you could pass along to some young artists? Or some old artists too. Or old artists at this time, or any artists at this time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I think we're gonna have to work together, right? We're gonna just mm -hmm. have to find each other and I'd like to find a group to work with and to hold on to each other. Because there's so much going on. Um, yeah. And I do think the values are changing. And yeah. I think we're going to go through a change with this administration. Yeah. Um, and I think the racial crisis in this country is real and it's going to affect the arts community in a very yeah. big way. Um, and it already is. It already has. Yeah. Um, and how, how, like, to, you know, it's all, and basics too, right? Like find, I, there was a great, somebody said, how do you make art? And he's like, find some people you really like to be with and get in a room and make art. Right. Yeah. Like find your collaborators and, mm -hmm. and don't wait for the business is yeah. my big, don't, you know, audition and try and, you know, go that route that I always did that too, but don't wait, create your own work. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was at NYU, actually, Harold Thurman gave a talk there. And that was his big thing. It was like, create mm -hmm. your own work. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. just go up. Work generates work. Mm -hmm. And you learn. And you learn from your mistakes. And you mm -hmm. learn from everything. You know, it, it's even you could get a little studio and put something up. Mm -hmm. And that's really yeah. how we're going to be working, I think, mm -hmm. when we go back is because mm -hmm. of the financials. You know, just invite friends. Just keep keep finding a way to express yourselves mm -hmm. and um, support others, and make place for people whose voices are not heard. Mm -hmm. um, just keep keep an awareness of you know your privilege and what you can do for others who really don't have as much. Mm -hmm. um, and just and also stay close to what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. like, don't make it generic, like, and don't listen to too many people about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I think yes. that a lot of times what I, what I see I happening with all that, what I see happening with people is that um, they, they aspire to something and it may be something that is uh, big in scope. And then frequently they start to experience a, a sort of a fear or intimidation about it. It's just like, oh, it's too much. It's, I, I couldn't possibly do it. And it leads to kind of uh, inactivity and inertness and, and uh, you know, stasis and, and all of that. Um, and I think that people forget that, you know, if you want to climb Mount Everest, that it starts with, you know, you just walk, walk on a path and it's just, it's all the little steps. 
and that um, instead of worrying about where the path goes, you can just, well, just start taking the steps. Mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like that's how all of, I, I feel 95% at least of the projects that I ended up getting not only involved with, but ended up being the more uh, rewarding and successful projects in my life all were that way kind of all along. It was mm -hmm. just baby step, baby step, baby step, baby mm -hmm. step. Mm -hmm. um, I've never, you know, sometimes I, I hear people talking about the concept of a big break or anything like that. And, you know, I, I always quick to say, and I feel as like, like, is there a break? I like, <laughs> <laughs> Does that happen for people? I, I met one person that happened. I've a couple yeah. that I've met that happened too. But I think for most of us, it's just like <laughs> one step, one step, one step, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Pick it up where you left off. Right. 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 Sometimes yeah. things fall apart and then you got to rebuild. Rebuild one yeah. step at a time. Right. But I, I love uh, what you're kind of, uh, what you know, what you're saying is like just, get a couple of people, uh, find, just create art, whatever that is, even if it's in uh, your, you know, your living room and um, just uh, creating, creating stories um, just to keep that all moving forward. And yeah, and yeah. staying close to your creative source. You uh -huh. know, like don't getting, don't get lost in the culture. Don't get lost right. in the, the you know this idea of success you know? what do you mean by a uh, or what do you think of when you when you refer to a creative source like what's your creative source that's a, oh what do i mean that's a great question mm -hmm. um i've been listening to these podcasts with elizabeth gilbert lately oh, called she, magic lessons yeah she's so good and it it really is about people who are you know they feel like they're poets but they're not writing and they want to and like to trust those little inklings, to mm -hmm. trust those little threads of ideas that come to you. Like yeah. the whole idea is that, you know, creative spirit is a muse actually, right. mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. you're being inspired. And so mm -hmm. to follow through on that, and it's usually just fear mm -hmm. that stops your, your you know, palette, right? Mm -hmm. like, Mm -hmm. Ooh, I have this idea to write this short story, and but I can't do that. I'm not a yeah. writer. Or, mm -hmm. you know, like what what are those ideas that you let go, and like just staying close to what your curiosity is mm -hmm. and your passion mm -hmm. and um, where your yeah curiosity enchantment. I like mm -hmm. the word enchantment. These That's days. a good she word. That. That's a good word. I well, like that too. What enchants you, you know, like mm -hmm. because the 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 creative source actually is a realm of enchantment. It mm -hmm. is imagination. It is bigger than us. And mm -hmm. so, what is it that you is coming to you in that way? Mm -hmm. to trust it. To trust mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's really that's beautiful. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, terrific. Uh, what are we? Um, oh yeah. So, uh, we're kind of at time. We're at that time. <laughs> we're at that time. So, we're I, at that I went time. by a blink. There, um, there is a. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Christina, Christina Denzinger, Denzinger says thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. Just fantastic. Right. Um, Someone also uh, asked aging you. actress Christina Denzinger. Oh wait. I'm sorry. Somebody I'm sorry, asked what? if you could repeat the name of the documentary. That yeah, you we said uh, Voices Beyond the Wall. I think we, yeah, we did say that. Voices Beyond the Wall is the name of the documentary. And um, yes, we just want to say we are so grateful to, uh, you know, for Wendy being in our lives and so grateful for she's just the most amazing um, artist and um, so grateful for your words of wisdom today. And um and for everybody watching, just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and stay healthy and stay positive and um, and yeah, and so. uh, we're you know maybe on the virtue of some positive change in our country. It certainly feels that way, and mm -hmm. and uh, two vaccine we're, possibilities. We're, uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. hopeful. Um, you know. Yep, healing one person at a time, <laughs> one day at a time, baby steps, baby steps, right? Yeah. yeah.
Wendy, I can't thank you enough. Uh, from thank you so much, you guys. You guys are such inspiration. You you yeah. hold such great space for so many people. Oh. And you've been such amazing teachers of mine too. Mm. I just mm. really love you as teachers. And mm. I'm grateful for everything you've taught me. Yeah. And likewise to you. Likewise to you. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Love you. Love you. Love you. Okay. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Stay well. And we will see you soon. Okay. Mm -hmm.